Hello students, so we are back to the discussion session. We have a new set of questions on the board and uh, hope you had written the exam very well and uh, you might have scored good marks. So let us uh, check all the questions whether those things have gone right or wrong. In case if those questions have gone wrong, you should know where you have gone wrong. Okay, uh, what is the reason why you have picked a correct answer and uh, logically how it fits into each question that also we will discuss today just like how we had uh, the other sessions uh, earlier okay now as usual we have uh, three questions on the board where in the given sentences if any part has gone uh, has got error you have to find it out and uh, in case if there is no error you need to uh, give the no improvement option okay that means uh, in each sentence we have a got uh, we got it into different parts and if if in case if any part has got an error you have to pick that as the correct answer and if there is no error of course the last one last option no error okay now let us uh, check the first sentence i had a test in mathematics today morning I had a test in mathematics today morning. When you read the sentence, you may feel like it's nothing wrong with that sentence. Of course, it's correct. But then there is a small error. And that is the use of preposition, which has gone wrong in the sentence. Of course, it has got error. This uh, sentence has got error. And uh, it should have been like this. Uh, actually, this preposition has gone wrong. Okay. It should have been, I had a test on mathematics. Okay. So, Whatever be the subject on, test on, test on English, test on physics, test on uh, uh, chemistry, test on mathematics. So, this part has gone wrong. So, that uh, B part or this part has got uh, an error and uh, what is the error? The use of wrong preposition. Okay. So, in case if uh, you get instead of this, how will you correct it? You just need to remove this in and instead you have to add on okay so now the sentence is correct i had a test on mathematics today morning okay another th thing uh, which is not uh, like uh, really uh, meant for this exam but still additional information see uh, this is grammatically correct there is no error but when you speak actually uh, like uh, when we indians speak we say that okay i had a test uh, on mathematics today morning but then the exact usage of language when you speak not gram grammar part not grammatical error but when you speak the better word to be chosen towards the end is uh, like i had a test on mathematics this morning we're talking about today morning right so this morning will be the apt use but grammatically today morning also is correct so there is no error in that part the error was in a test in mathematics which should be on mathematics okay now the second sentence is a girl must be gracious if she wishes to be a ballerina. Okay. A girl must be gracious if she wishes to be a ballerina. There is no error. Every part is correct. A girl must be gracious if she wishes means if she wants to be a ballerina. Okay. So, there is no error. So, that no error is the correct option. Okay. Now, the third sentence is in a very harsh tone. He shouted at his servants and told them that he does not need their services. Okay. In a very harsh tone, he shouted at his servants and told them that he doesn't need their services. So, here also like you will be a little bit confused. Okay. What has gone wrong or is it no error as the answer? No, actually it has an error. And that is uh, here we speak about clauses. Okay. This type of sentence is called uh, you know, close where the principal clause or the main clause in a very harsh tone, he shouted at his servants actually together up to this part in a very harsh tone. He shouted at his service, uh, servants. Uh, this should be taken as the principal clause or the main clause and where the verb shouted is given in past tense, not in present tense. Okay. And plus, uh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, like when the principal clause, when the verb in the principal clause is in uh, past tense, the 
like subordinate close also should have past tense and told them that he did not need their services so this part has got uh, error and uh, the error is uh, the verb the tense of the verb and that is uh, he instead of he does not need their services it should be he did not need their services okay so this part has got uh, error so uh, like you know how to correct it and the reason is here we have a, it's a clause where we have two parts and the principal clause the verb is in simple past tense or past tense so in that sense this also should be in past tense so the correct uh, form of the sentence is in a very harsh tone he shouted at his servants and told them that he did not need their services only then this will be uh, a correct sentence okay so out of these three sentences only the second has got no error but the first and third of course have errors okay so we will move on to the next set of questions here fourth and fifth two questions in the following questions a part of the sentence is underlined that's visible to you on the board a part of the sentence a small phrase a small part has been underlined and uh, you have to find out uh, if you can substitute that part with a better option you can do that or else if there is no improvement required for this uh, these two underlined uh, items then you can choose the last one no improvement as option okay so let us see if we could uh, substitute the first uh, one his acting is too good his acting is too good you know what like grammatically or like in a conversational style when you speak of course very often we use this term okay his act, uh, acting is too good good enough these are terms that we use in our speech but it actually is an incomplete sentence okay so his acting is too good if you add that too good that means something more is to be added with the sentence to make it a complete or sensible sentence like it should have been his acting is too good to win an oscar award that would have been uh, fair enough to take this as the correct one okay so in that sense we can find a better substitute for the underlined item and that is just the simple term very good his acting is very good then it makes a complete sentence okay otherwise if you just add or if you just say his acting is too good it shows a sense of incompletion and i mean incomplete sentence so, so like uh, it should be his acting is very good okay now the next one fifth question the novel consists a thousand pages okay the novel consists a thousand pages i guess uh majority of you or almost everyone has got this as correct answer the no something is missing right so a preposition is required to make it a complete uh, completely sensible sentence the novel consists of a thousand pages so actually this is wrong so here the novel consists of a thousand pages is the correct option so here uh, for both these uh, sentences we need substitutes with which we have substituted the underlined parts okay so the first one is very good and second one is consists of that preposition of was missing here which we added or we have got the correct option now okay now next is uh, yeah it's a passage based question and uh, remember uh, like uh, like i said last time sometimes to get the answer to the last sentence you may have to go to the first part again of the passage okay that means like how well you read and understand the passage only uh, then you will be able to get the clues or uh, you will be able to find it out and uh, here uh, see if it is uh, just a matter of adding prepositions or articles or such small items you would have uh, filled it up or else you would have given the answers without even checking the options like we did last time okay but here uh, we have set of words given of course uh, so you need to focus on the words given as choices and you have to find out the exact one with which you can complete this uh, actually uh, like a few words are missing which you have to uh, like uh, add or which you have to uh, like uh, uh, you have to give okay or you have to insert a few words which are given as options okay so my aunt mira is uh, strangely like a thunderstorm when she is angry so the aunt's nature or her character has been compared to thunderstorm like a bright sunny day that is usually the dash to a storm 
like a bright sunny day that is usually the dash to a storm before storm actually it, it appears to be a very bright or calm day so there is a calmness unusual calmness before storm okay exactly the same usage so like like a bright sunny day that is usually the dash to a storm something which comes before a storm okay so let us see the options given to you there are similar words uh, interlude is there preface is there epilogue is there prelude is there so unless you know the meanings of these words you will not be able to find out the correct option okay what exactly is an interlude an interlude means uh, like at regular intervals okay something which happens at intervals so this cannot be taken as the option then preface is actually a word with uh, which we or else we use that in connection with a book a preface to the book means a kind of introduction to the book okay so you start with an introduction or a preface and only then the actual substance or matter starts in a book so preface is used in connection with a printed material or book so this also cannot be chosen then we have epilogue and prelude okay so epilogue just like this is uh, like preface with which we start a book exactly same way this also epilogue also is connected with a book the book ends with an epilogue that means uh, a comment or else a review is given at the end of the book and that is what you call uh, an epilogue sometimes uh, the title of the book is elaborated or as a short note is given at the end or else just an overall review of the book is given at the end uh, which will help the reader to choose the book okay so that is what you call an epilogue so both preface and epilogues uh, uh, these two words are used for books so we cannot choose that so that leaves only one option that is prelude prelude means something an incident or an event which happens before another incident so exactly this is what we require for this blank see like a bright sunny day that is usually the prelude to a storm so before that storm Uh, as a prelude to the storm means uh, like uh, uh, an incident or event before a storm okay so exactly this is what we require prelude okay to a storm her normal dash suddenly begins to cloud so when she is angry her normal dash suddenly begins to cloud okay so her normal is it complexion or inclination preposition or disposition okay complexion means what the color of skin we use the terms like uh, okay she is fair so fair complexion means that uh, color of skin dark complexion medium complexion okay so that shows the color of skin which cannot be used in this context then we have inclination and preposition and disposition inclination and disposition are quite similar but there is a huge i mean uh, like a small difference that is uh, disposition means uh, tendency okay tendency then we have preposition preposition means hypothesis or uh, assuming things okay so uh, complexion cannot be taken preposition cannot be taken so we have inclination and disposition disposition means uh, her nature or her temperament okay so inclination is actually uh, her uh, a uh, tendency and uh, disposition is her temperament her mood or her temperament or her nature so this is the better word disposition so uh, like uh, her normal disposition suddenly begins to cloud her temperament her mood her uh, nature suddenly changes or he, it becomes a bit dark okay as the day dash and a few thunder clap so uh, you do not require this word and it's just a printing mistake we can just omit it uh, like uh, suddenly begins to cloud as the day dash and a few thunder claps roll out she also darkens so as the day dash as the day uh, is it darkens advances brightens or dawn see you already have a hint here in the sentence as the day darkens her she also darkens so already the word is given as a hint so here also we require the same word as the day darkens okay so as the day darkens and a few thunderclaps roll out she also darkens and begins to dash begins to 
not that she screams she breaks or she shouts but she almost explodes she bursts out or she explodes okay then the last one the balls the thunderballs get more and more dash until finally the rain begins the thunderballs or the the balls get more and more is a rare scarce frequent common frequent okay so before uh, like it rains or before storm this is the like these are the symptoms like the balls would get more and more frequent and finally it starts raining just like our temperament also changes okay so this is how you have to fill it up now let us uh, just uh, read this again my aunt mira is strangely like a thunderstorm when she's angry like a bright sunny day that is usually the prelude to a storm her normal disposition suddenly begins to cloud as the day darkens and a few thunderclouds roll out she also darkens and begins to explode the balls get more and more frequent until finally the rain begins so now you got the passage uh, perfectly correct with these words inserted okay so always remember when you have uh, options like this don't just jump into conclusion read understand all the words all the word meanings only then you will be able to know which word fits into this context okay next is uh, in the following questions uh, we have three questions on the board out of the four alternatives choose the one which can be substituted for the given words or sentence that means you have to find out a one word for the sentences given on the board okay the first one is what do you call a room a small room in a big house or hotel or ship etc where glasses dishes spoons and such cutleries food etc are kept so well like the first word that comes into our mind will be kitchen but actually that is not the exact term we use that in our uh, like daily uh, use we use that term kitchen where we keep food where we uh, keep glasses dishes but kitchen is the place or area where the cook is cooked so where the food is cooked not cook is cooked but the food is cooked okay so uh, we are speaking about a room where uh, it could be in a house it could be in a, I mean, in a big house it could be in a hotel it could be we're talking about not uh, like small houses we're talking about big houses big mansions or big hotels or ship etc where glasses dishes spoons food etc are kept or stored so that is Uh, let us see the options first is it portico pantry mezzanine or kitchen okay kitchen in a small house where the food items are cooked also it could be a kitchen so portico means what portico is the porch area okay the with the pillars or the like uh, porch area of a house then we have a uh, pantry mezzanine actually the correct option is pantry pantry is the place where we keep these things in a big house or hotel or ship where these items are kept we call it as pantry okay then what is a mezzanine a uh, mezzanine actually is the connecting floor or else uh, a kind of intermediate floor to connect two stories or two uh, like floors okay in between two floors where we have an intermediate floor a small one a corridor type that's what we call mezzanine okay now next is a foreigner what do you call a foreigner who settles in a country that means who comes to a country to settle okay so uh, is it alien is a word which you know for sure cannot be used in this context then a visitor is there immigrant is there emigrant is there so definitely you will be confused between a and b so you know that uh, it could either be immigrant a option or emigrant b option okay so there is a, a difference so actually the option which you need for this particular sentence is immigrant say the in other terms suppose in our country in india when somebody comes to uh, like uh, settle down okay a foreigner the one who doesn't belong to our nation when he or she comes down to our country and settle down okay we call him or her as immigrant so not by native that he or she belongs to our country but they come and uh, not just for visiting but uh, to settle down and you call them as immigrants okay but what uh, what about emigrant what is the difference between the two words of course there's a huge difference when we go and settle down 
uh, in another country, when we leave our country and we go to another country to settle down, we call ourselves as immigrants. Okay, so we leave our country and uh, we go and settle down in another country and uh, we can call ourselves as immigrant. But then immigrant is somebody comes to our nation to settle down, a foreigner, he will be an immigrant. Okay, now next is doing something according to one's own free will completely willingly okay so we have willfully as one of the options voluntarily obligingly okay then compulsorily so here we talk about something that we do in our own free will that means we are happy to do it we take initiative to do it okay so is it willfully willfully is actually uh, we uh, we are uh, we are stubborn enough or we make someone to do something forcefully Okay, or we are doing that out of force. Compulsory also has got somewhat same meaning. Then we have obligingly and voluntarily. So the option is all voluntarily which you require uh, for this particular question. Obligingly means as if it's your responsibility. Obligingly is more of responsibility. Okay, whether you like it or not, out of your responsibility, moral responsibility that you do it. But here we talk about something that we do completely free of our own will that means we are happy to do it and that is or we take initiative to do it and that is voluntarily okay next is in the following questions four alternatives are given for the idiom or phrase printed in bold uh, in the sentence even if it's not given in bold but i'll tell you where the uh, what do you call uh, uh, idiom is and you have to find out the option which is the meaning of this uh, idiom okay she was on the horns of a dilemma on the horns of a dilemma is the idiom as she had either to leave her job or divorce her husband see the meaning is early uh, see when you have idioms used in sentences like this and if you get uh, similar questions for exam it's going to be easy why because you can at least uh, find out the meaning from the context in which it is used okay but if only this much is given and you are uh, asked to find out uh, the meaning sometimes with the help of a word or two you will get the meaning for example suppose if you are given only this much on the board and not and uh, as a sentence not in the form of sentence at least with the help of this word uh, dilemma you will be able to guess the meaning even if idioms are where we cannot take the literal meaning of the words printed but still sometimes it would help you like on the horns of a dilemma the word dilemma will give you a clue to the meaning Dilemma is actually a situation where uh, you are left with two choices or two options. You can't decide which one to be chosen. Okay. So somebody gives you two options, two equal options, two equal opportunities. You have to choose one and uh, you cannot decide which one should be chosen. Exactly like this. Like she was given two options, like either she has to resign uh, from her job or she has to leave her job or she has to uh, divorce or leave her husband. To leave her job or leave her husband equally, uh, what do you call, worse of, uh, options for her, right? So, of course, she is in a dilemma or she is in a confusion or she is in a very tough or difficult situation. Okay, so uh, in a nervous condition, in terrible mood, it has got nothing to do with the mood, in a difficult situation so when you're given two option and uh, you are totally confused you cannot decide you find the situation quite difficult to make a decision and that is what you call on the horns of a dilemma the word dilemma is the clue to your uh, answer okay now the next idiom is he died in to die in harness or died in harness okay so to die uh, in harness actually means like uh, uh, while uh, working itself, we pass away. A person who dies while working. Like uh, d die to die in harness doesn't mean ceased. Of course, it's death. Okay. Not died uh, out of any disease or died for his country. Died while working is the correct option. That means like, uh, for example, a soldier. Okay, the one who uh, goes uh, to the war front and uh, fights for his nation and while fighting for his nation, if he passes away, if he dies, that is what he call he died in harness. Okay, so you uh, pass away or you die when 
you are still working or while working you pass away and that is what you call to die in harness okay next we have in the following questions choose a word opposite in meaning to the given word that means you have to find out antonym uh, to the given words or printed words okay so you need to know the meaning of the words otherwise how will you know the opposite of it so such words or such enrichment of vocabulary now every now and then is required for cuet exam okay so ferment is a word and we have been given a few options where both antonyms and synonyms are given okay in fact uh, similar to the meaning of ferment is also given as one of the options okay and you need to find out the word opposite that means antonym not synonym okay ferment we have the options like uh, repulse is there control is there increase is there quell is there okay so actually ferment means you uh, like uh, to to stimulate or to incite or to start to begin etc to stimulate or to start an action or to what do you call incite instigate all these could be taken as a synonyms for the word ferment and opposite to that is to quell to quell means to stop ferment is to start or to uh, like incite to almost to to begin to to start so to stop just the opposite will be quell quell means to put an end to an action which is opposite to the word ferment okay the next is tardy tardy uh, we have been given the options opposites given prompt gradual late lazy okay actually tardy means late and gradual or slow okay and uh, late and gradual or very slow is tardy so opposite will be prompt or quick prompt means sudden or quick not late not slow okay not being lazy quick in action sudden in action that is prompt so we have got the opposites ferment opposite quell to start to stop tardy is being late or being slow prompt is opposite quick or sudden okay now we have to find out uh, the synonyms okay in the following questions out of the four alternatives choose the one which best expresses the meaning of the word the meaning of the word means a similar meaning or uh, you call it as synonyms okay so we have uh, three uh, quest three words enigma is there concurrence is there spanish is there so enigma means actually something mysterious not very straight a bit confusing mysterious something which puzzles okay so it's not truth fear difficulty okay it is something puzzling or something mysterious is enigma all right now next is concurrence concurrence we have been given the options disappearance is there conquest is there currency is there agreement is there the word concurrence has got uh, more than one meaning okay uh, one of the meanings is actually to uh, to agree with something to be in agreement with something which is given as the option okay another meaning for the word concurrence means like uh, one or two or more than two events happening one after the other consistently as a series of actions okay uh, two or uh, one or two events happening one after the other is also concurrence and that also is consistency okay so here similar to this word the other meaning of the word concurrence is agreement so that is given as one of the options so this could be chosen okay the spanish is uh, what is a spanish is it uh, planning or pioneering or actually this is lineage not uh, lineage the t is to be i'll just write it again it's lineage without t okay so a spanish uh, is is it planning pioneering or lineage? lineage means ancestral something connected to our family okay then pioneering means something progressive something progressive or something which is happening or stimulating a spanish is actually spying okay you spy on something or someone you called as espionage so it is given as one of the options spying is the correct answer okay 
next we have a passage based question but where is the passage yeah it's based on passage all right so actually the uh, passage is based uh, on watching television okay the it has got advantages and more of disadvantages so the disadvantage is since you have uh, like attended the test uh, even if the passage right now is missing but you know like uh, it's based on a passage where only the questions are right now given uh, i'll tell you the gist of the passage it's all about how watching television for continuous hours can affect the uh, like a uh, person adversely in a negative way okay and uh, passage it deals uh, with how watching television for long duration would make the people addicted to it okay so uh, that is uh, one of the points given of course like uh, tv would help you to know so, or it would get, give you uh, like certain sort of knowledge also as well but uh, along with that here in this passage we speak more of uh, the disadvantages of watching television where one of the strongest uh, points given the passage was how it would affect the people by making them addicted to it sometimes people who watch uh, like uh, programs which promotes violence that would affect their character as well like if you are in the habit of watching programs that highlights violence if you watch it for long hours and for many days uh, like uh, of course especially among children it would affect their character okay character formation that would be affected that also is one of the points discussed in the passage okay so you can decide which program is to be watched and how much time is to be like uh, spent for that so instead of becoming addicted to it if you choose the programs if you uh, decide the uh, like uh, time or duration that you spend for watching television of course it would help you a lot and uh, you, you can uh, like uh, get uh, advantages of the a particular uh, like uh, yeah activity of watching television so here the passage deals uh, with the negatives or disadvantages okay but based on that we have the questions television can be useful to people when can it be useful to people is it when uh, they become wild of course no Uh, is it when they follow only a particular program you can't decide that, okay i will watch only particular i'll watch only reality shows or i'll watch only uh, like uh, musical programs that you cannot uh, like decide instead we have better option if they get addicted to it that will not be useful instead if they carefully choose the shows that they watch if you have that knack if you have that uh, what we call intelligence or common sense to choose a program that uh, will not affect your uh, character negatively of course that would be the better option okay so if they if the people they select they choose the programs that they watch and if they choose good programs not violent programs that would of course be taken as something useful okay then what do children of some countries do more than studying and sleeping of course it's the passage was all about watching television so it's not about playing with friends relaxing at home but watching television so it's a very small passage it speaks about watching television for long duration and that is the option given okay what do the reports of many studies reveal so the passage also reveals how the studies or surveys conducted have shown that uh, is it people are becoming fat always sitting in front of the uh, television uh, that is one of the disadvantages but not discussed in the passage if you analyze the problem in general not focusing on the passage given of course this is uh, one of the disadvantages but in the passage this option is not given then people are neglecting their work because of tv is also not given in the passage people become more violent after certain programs that is given as a sentence or it's given straight in the passage people become more violent after certain programs okay that means certain programs uh, if you spend more hours watching those types of program which promotes violence of course your character also will be affected and you also will be or show the tendency of 
like violence after watching certain programs not all programs but certain programs okay then book tube means a program a color tube a television telephone of course the passage is all about television so this is the i, I do remember that sentence where this has been used watching book tube for a long time will will affect children so watching book tube means television okay the worst effect of television is that it according to the passage is it that it affects their mind violently not all the programs of course can be very boring watching television for a long time is it boring no makes people addicted to it all the pro problems happen when people are addicted to it when they spend more hours unlimited hours and when they have addiction to it that is when all the problems start okay so according to the passage given this is the correct option okay when you spend more time when you're addicted to it automatically other problems also would come like bad programs would affect your mind uh, adversely then uh, people would be lazy if they sit for long hours in front of television okay so the main the root cause is when people are addicted to it okay next is yeah as usual we have uh, active and passive voices here uh, select the correct passive form of the given sentence so obviously on the board you are given an active sentence you have to find out the passive one so since we have uh, you have attempted uh, two or three exams so by this time you know what an active uh, voice is and what a passive voice is and what are the rules okay we have seen other examples as well so anyways uh, here remember in uh, active voice subject is given more prominence and there is a verb and there is an object object is of less importance but when you convert it into passive form that is what we have to do now when you convert it into passive voice what are the rules the object must be given more importance and the tense must not be changed okay now let us focus on the sentence given on the board do not park your car in front of my house so somebody is given instruction that you're not supposed to park your car in front of my house okay so this is active voice so what should be this uh, like um, a passive of this your car you can start with your car okay do not park we started with with what a verb do not park is a verb okay this is actually the object so object must be given prominence when you change it into passive voice construction so you can start with your park your park do not let us see the options okay Uh, my house should not be parked this does not make any sense at all so this cannot be taken so this is completely out of our choice then we have three more options left out your car need not be parked means you have been given an option so according to this sentence you are strictly uh, prohibited you are not supposed to you are not given any choice to park your car in front of my house so here your car need not be parked means that leaves an option okay your car could not be means you have some trouble and uh, like because of a technical trouble that you cannot park that also is not the reason but your car should not be parked in front of my house so it's strictly said that your car should not be or, uh, almost like saying must not okay your car should not be parked in front of my house all right select the word which means the same as the group of words given that means find out a one word for this sentence a person or animal or plant belonging originally to a place what do you call those things o uh, occupant alien native resident so here also we can omit this or we can uh, like uh, uh, strike this off we would not require this option because you know what alien is now we have 
occupant is there, native is there, resident is there. So we are actually uh, confused between, probably we are confused between native and resident. Okay, so according to the sentence, a person, animal or plant belonging originally is the word or clue given to get the answer to a place. That means if by birth you belong to a place, what do you call, what is the term with which you can call or label yourself? That is the meaning of the sentence. By birth, by origin, by birth, if you belong, suppose I like uh, I belong to India. I mean, I took, I was born in India. But then uh, like I went abroad, I settled down in some other place, not in India. But still, I will call myself a native of India. Okay. Uh, native is a place where you belong originally or by birth you belong to a place okay and resident means what you reside in a particular place but that may not be permanent not that you have uh, uh, been born there it's just that you reside there you stay there okay so that is the difference between native being native and resident so if you uh, really or originally belong to a place that's the question if you by birth belong to a place you can call yourself as a native and that is the exact option we require resident means you stay in a particular place but may not be permanently it could be a temporary stay then what is occupant occupant means you occupy a place uh, for a short period it need not be uh, like a country or uh, uh, that place need not be a country it could even be you sit in a car you sit in a vehicle you sit in a bus you sit in a car for some time that means you are occupying that car for some time you are the occupant there that means you stay there for a small period of time not always in a country uh, or place but it could even be uh, a small room or a car, a vehicle where you uh, like uh, stay for a small duration and that is when you can call yourself as occupant. Okay, so native is the exact choice. Select antonym or opposite of the given word, escalate. Escalate means to rise or to increase, to rise, to heighten, synonyms but we need antonym or opposite so reduce is the word increase reduce escalate reduce escalate means increase reduce is option okay again we have to find out antonym for the word given tenta tenta coconut tenta okay tenta means something very delicate very soft very gentle so all these are synonyms being gentle being soft warm these are all like a, a kind of synonym given for tender but what we need is an antonym opposite so only one antonym is given as the option that is rough tender means soft opposite is rough okay Select the most appropriate word to fill in the blank that means uh, you have been given a context where one of the word is missing and you have to find from the given options which word would fit into this context okay the state government argued that it could not dash the increase in the teachers they cannot what they cannot they could not dash the increase or the number of teachers if they increase they won't be able to give them salary okay so what is that word to be used let us try all the words the state government argued that it could not spare the increase. It does not make any sense. It could not get the increase. Of course, uh, absurd. Stand the, it could not stand the increase. No, but afford. Afford means it's not affordable. The number of teachers, if it's increased, that means to give the salary won't be, uh, the government cannot afford to give them salary. So afford is the word to be chosen. Now, okay, we, we are given four uh, like sentences, but in a jumbled way. 
and uh, for jumble sentence also you may have to spend a little more time because you need to read the statements and then you have to find out like which sentence comes first okay that sort of pollution so it's obvious that we cannot start with a okay then environmental groups have tagged philippines as one of the world's biggest ocean polluters then in thailand also a whale died this also we cannot start with c okay then we can start actually with b environmental groups have tagged philippines as one of the world's biggest ocean polluters due to its reliance on single use plastic so we can start with b all right now uh, we have two options which started with b now let us see which could be chosen as the correct answer is it b a d c or b c a d what is b a b a environmental groups have tagged philippines as one of the world's biggest ocean polluters due to its reliance on single use plastic that sort of pollution which is also widespread in other south this could be taken let us see if we can uh, like uh, choose c as the next option in thailand also so we can go for the second option b a d c b then a d c okay so we can start with this sentence then a environmental groups have tagged the philippines is one of the world's biggest ocean polluters due to its reliance on single use plastic that sort of pollution which is also widespread in other uh, southeast asian nations regularly kills wildlife like whales and turtles that ingest the intake the waste and then uh, like a d in the latest case a whale with 40 kilos of plastic trash and finally in thailand also a whale died so this also part could come as the last item so definitely it would be b a d c okay i guess for such type of questions you have to spend more time next is select the most appropriate word uh, with which you can fill up this blank scientists at cambridge university are dash how plants can give us sustainable energy everlasting energy okay now we have a few words given with which you can fill this up and uh, scrutinizing is there investigating is there inspecting is there looking is there okay so let us uh, check if any of these words could be used scientists at cambridge university are scrutinizing how plants can give us sustainable energy or is it uh, they are investigating they are inspecting they are looking this cannot be taken uh, taken looking they are looking how plants looking for is uh, use but not in this context so this can be omitted we can we have to choose either a b or c scrutinizing inspecting investigating actually scrutinizing and inspecting are the options you can choose if you are already given or you have to uh, like you're already uh, given a, a matter and you have to analyze it you already have the content you already have the matter and what you need is you have so you have a source and then you need to scrutinize it you have to analyze it you have to inspect it but here the sentence says that scientists at cambridge university are uh, like uh, investigating how plants or they are trying to find out investigating is exactly the word to be chosen that is how like uh, they are trying to find out how plants can give a sustainable energy they are trying to get new ways with which they can find it out not that they are already given options and from that they have to analyze so investigating or to find out is the exact option investigating select the wrongly spelled or one of the words uh, given with a wrong spelling find that out comparison correct spelling communication correct spelling competition this should have been competition so this has got the wrong spelling and how will you correct it com p e t i t i o n competition competition com p is wrong p e okay next select the most appropriate option to substitute the unlined that means uh, you have to find out whatever is unlined if you could 
find out the better option with which you can uh, substitute this unlined item you have to choose and uh, if uh, no improvement is required you can choose no improvement okay i look for a better job for the last two months but nothing is in sight you're familiar with such sentences or such types of sentences because in the previous exams also the same rule has been analyzed similar type of question was given to you see wherever we have duration of time for the last two months means duration of the time so in a sentence where you are given duration of uh, time what should be the tense of the verb either present perfect continuous or past perfect continuous okay i look for a better job this is the verb and what is the tense used there i look for a better job is simple present tense so with duration of time you cannot use simple present tense you have to use either past perfect continuous or present perfect continuous okay so this is the wrong tense used so let us find out the correct one i have looked is not present perfect and is just present perfect so this cannot be taken look this simple past tense i have been looking for a better job is the exact requirement okay so have been looking is a present perfect continuous tense so with duration of time we have to use present perfect continuous tense so the sentence should be like this i have been looking for a better job for the last two months but nothing is in sight okay next is select the correct active form of the given sentence so earlier in one of the uh, questions we were asked to find out the passive of the active voice and right now passive is already given active is to be traced out okay so passive means what where the object is given importance so here object in this question object is given important so main gate this is the object this is the object is given important and uh, gun toting guards is the subject so to find out the active form you have to find out a sentence where the subject gun toting guards uh, is given importance that means a sentence which starts with gun toting guards and then what is the tense you cannot change the tense also in active voice was being guarded means past continuous past continuous so two things you have to find out which sentence which option starts with gun toting guards and which sentence has got past continuous tense okay this one the main gate of the building this sentence does not start with the subject so this cannot be taken so we have three more gun toting guards we have to start with gun toting guards where guarding the main gate of the building where guarding means past continuous that is what we require we have to start with gun toting guards and we also require past continuous tense what is wrong with this sentence these two sentences these also started with gun toting guards right gun toting guards have been guarding means present perfect continuous so the tense has gone wrong and then here guard past tense here also the tense has gone wrong so was being guarded means what past continuous so in the active also it must be past continuous so this is the correct option okay next is in the sentence identify the segment which contains a grammatical error okay so in the whole sentence one of the parts or segments had gone wrong or has got error find that out okay which part has gone wrong due to the cyclone dai vast areas of land have been flooded roads destroyed communications disrupting in zimbabwe and mozambique okay so the like uh, it's very uh, visible due to the cyclone dai vast areas of land have been flooded roads destroyed past tense roads destroyed and communications disrupt uh, disrupting so this also must be in past tense so the error is in this part communications disrupting so how will you correct it 
and communications disrupted just like roads destroyed past tense exactly same way and communications disrupted in Zimbabwe and Mozambique. So this tense is wrong this should be corrected. So this part has gone wrong and how will you correct it? You have to make it as disrupted not disrupting. Okay. Select the most appropriate meaning of the given idiom. So here uh, the trouble is you are not given in the form of a sentence where uh, you could have found the context in which it has been used. Instead just idiom is given you have to find it out. Okay. Cause an arm, a cause an arm and a leg. That means something which you buy after paying a huge sum or amount or very expensive. That's what you call cause an arm and a leg. That means very expensive. Not rarely available, easy to obtain, nothing to lose, but very, really expensive. Okay. Next is a passage based question. I guess we have been given uh, in a better way. Okay. Same thing, same question. We have been given a passage based on which you have the question. So in this passage, we have a few words missing and those words are given as options. Okay. You have to choose. An Italian mayor has been cleaning the streets along with his councillors after their town dash with no manual workers. After their town was left with no manual workers. Okay. So an Italian mayor, the one, the authority who was holding a high position. In fact, he was cleaning the streets along with his councillors. Why? Because their town was left with no physical or manual labors. It is in the reports. Okay. In fact, Dash was sweeping the pizza. In fact, the mayor was. That means he was. He was. Okay. He was sweeping the pizza in front of the Dash church in preparation. Dash church, next church, no. Near church, nearby would have been better. Neighboring would have been better, but local local okay in front of the local church in preparation for market day dash the deputy mayor's father that means along with or alongside alongside that means not just the mayor and his counselors his father also was there along with him so market day alongside deputy mayor's father and the town councillor armed with a high pressure hose the town Zerfilia's last dash retired so why all these troubles because the last worker resigned from his job or like uh, yeah retired from his job six months back or ago and nobody has been hired ever since okay so now the sentence is, uh, structure is like this an Italian mayor has been cleaning the streets along with his councillors after their town was left with no manual workers or laborers. It's reported. In fact, he was sweeping the pizza in front of the local church in preparation of ma for market day alongside the deputy mayor's father and uh, a town councillor armed with a high pressure hose. The town's last worker retired six months ago and nobody has been hired since then. Now it makes a sensible passage. Given below are four jumble sentences. Again, we have been given jumble sentences. You have to rearrange it. Okay. So uh, here it goes. Elephantas were tracked from Democratic Republic of Congo for two months. Let us see if we could start with something better. Customs officials in Thailand say we cannot start with this B. Four tons of ivory with a market value of six million dollar was it was an impressive haul. So we can start with C. Okay, and then uh, well, we have two options which start with C, A, and D. So next is what if we start with A? Okay, four tons of ivory with a market value of this much dollars uh, it was an impressive haul elephant tusks were tracked from so that that does not any, uh, make any sense so we can start with b customs officials in thailand say it's the biggest seizure in the country's history so it should be c first b a d c b a d 
C, B, A, D. So now it makes a sensible uh, way of arranging things. C, four tons of ivory with a market value of this much dollar was, it was an impressive haul. Okay. Customs officials in Thailand say it's the biggest zisha in the country's history. Elephant tusks were tracked from the Democratic Republic of Congo for two months. Officials say that they were being transported from Laos from where they believed the ivory would be sold. So this is the perfect way of arranging the passage. Select the wrongly spell, wrong spelling. Exemplify, example, example, correct spelling, exhale, exempt, correct spelling. But what is wrong with this spelling? This is wrong. What should be the correction? exemplify that means em to set an example to give an example to put forth an example so exemplify should be the correct spelling with e okay now select the synonym or similar in meaning garrulous see one who talks too much in a silly way or silly talk talking too much is garrulous so talkative concise means precise no throaty means something uh, like uh, a kind of voice that you let out of your throat okay guttural also similar meaning like you you give out a, a kind of awkward voice or sound but garrulous means the one who talks too much talkative select the most appropriate option to substitute that means uh, find out uh, whether we have got a better uh, sentence or sorry a part with which this could be substituted if there is no improvement required, you can choose the first one, no improvement. If you join this job now, it's now. Okay, printing error, it should be now. If you join this job now, it proves to be good in the long run. If, it's an if clause. If, possibility. Okay, if you join this job now, it will prove to be good in the long run that means if you choose this job now it will prove to be good in your future or later so if clause means it should be future tense it will prove so it this tense is wrong it proves means already you have chosen the job if you choose this job if you join this job that means future possibility is to be added as a tense so it will prove to be good not that it has already been proved to be good okay in the sentence identify the segment which contains a grammatical error okay she got two quick promotions in order that she has good communication skills when you read it of course you will find out like something is wrong somewhere right she got two quick promotions in order that she has good communication skills that in order that is wrong that is not to be used in this context okay in order means with reference to okay she got two quick promotions in order that has gone wrong so how will you correct it so many options are there to correct it she got two quick promotions as she has good communication skills since she has good communication skills because she has communication, good communication skills. So instead of, in order that you can use since, because, because or as. Okay, so this part has gone wrong. Select the most appropriate meaning of the given idiom. Again, uh, like uh, get out of hand. When two people argue, the argument goes so worse that the situation goes out of control. So to get out of hand means to get out of control. So not to get upset or give up something or to complete a task but something which has gone out of your hand means out of your control okay select the synonym or similar in meaning tilt this uh, i guess is a familiar term because you you tilt you use phone you use mobile you tilt something okay you change the position of something in a kind of like uh, you you slant something okay the slant is given that means you or like a change the degree of something you you just tilt it a little bit you change the position like uh, keeping it leaning to something okay slant 
Now the last one is select the word which means the same as a group of words or give the one word. A person without a settled home or regular work who wanders from place to work, place and lives by begging. The one who does not have a house to live in and goes from one place to another place to make his living and uh, his main living is by begging. What do you call that person? Last time for uh, the exam you had the word truant which means a student who or does not attend the class or becomes absentee for no particular reason. So truant cannot be taken. Itinerant and migrant. Vagrant is the correct option. Vagrant is a person. Itinerant means the one who travels. Just traveling from place to place. Not begging for arms for living. Just a traveler will be itinerant. Then migrant means what? The one who migrates, leaving his place and settles down in another place. So vagrant is the correct word, which shows a person who goes from place to place begging arms for his survival. Okay. So with that, we wind this up. We wind this uh, session up and uh, hope to see you soon with the next uh, set of questions after the next exam. So next week after the exam, we will meet again. So till then, you prepare well. You just uh, take rest and take care of your studies. Thank you.